Hey everyone, today we're going to kick things up a notch by taking it to the next dimension. That's right, we're going 3D. We're going to be looking at depth cameras, which are just like regular cameras except they can see in 3D, which I think is pretty cool. Now this tutorial is going to assume you've already just watched the last tutorial, which is on how to use regular cameras in ROS. So if you haven't seen that one, pause this one, go watch it first and then come back. And just like that tutorial, this one's going to be split up into four sections. First we'll look at what depth cameras are and how they work, then how we use depth cameras inside ROS, then we'll simulate a depth camera in Gazebo, and then finally we'll connect to a real depth camera that you could use on your robot. Now some of you will be watching this as part of my series on how to build a mobile robot with ROS. I'll include a link to that playlist in the description below. And you might be wondering, I just bought a Raspberry Pi camera in the last video, now do I need to buy a depth camera as well? And no you don't. This project is only going to use one camera, and it's really only going to use the RGB functionality, not the depth functionality. I'm only including this section on depth cameras because I know some of you out there might want to buy a depth camera from the start and use it so that you've got the flexibility to use the depth uh, in the future if needed. So what are depth cameras? Put simply, depth cameras are cameras that return a distance or a depth to each pixel, and this can be instead of or in addition to the intensity of the pixel, like a normal camera, that's what we saw in the last tutorial. Now there are a bunch of different technologies that can be used to make depth cameras, but there are three main ones. The first one is structured light, so this is where it will broadcast an infrared pattern onto the environment around it, and then use a camera to detect distortions in that pattern. That's how the, the first connect on the Xbox 360 worked. The second type is time of flight, and this is where it broadcasts pulses of light and then it detects the patterns of the time that that takes for those pulses to come back to the camera. This is very similar to how a LiDAR works, and that's how the uh, Kinect version 2 from the Xbox One worked. The third common type is stereo, and that's the way our eyes work. So you've got two little cameras, a left camera and a right camera, and by comparing the difference between the two, you can estimate the depth to things in the scene. That's how this little camera, the Oak D Lite works, and that's what we're going to be using later on in this tutorial. We're going to connect this camera to ROS so you could put it on a robot. Regardless of the camera technology used, it's going to be coupled with some software that's either running on board the camera or off board on a computer somewhere. And this software can take the raw sensor data and turn that into a depth image. That depth image can then be converted into a point cloud and you'd use it just the same as you would use a 3D LiDAR. The technology to do this processing is getting better and better every day. In fact, with modern machine learning techniques, you can sometimes even produce a depth image just based off an RGB camera. You don't even need a depth camera. It's also important to make sure that depth cameras are calibrated, even more so than with regular cameras. Otherwise, your final point cloud is going to have points in the wrong places. And the reason depth cameras are getting so popular is two of the big things that we do with cameras, that's object detection and SLAM, can be made heaps better by having the depth information associated with the scene that we're seeing. So how do we use depth cameras in ROS then? Well, for the most part, they're just the same as regular cameras. You're going to have a driver node that's publishing an image topic and a camera info topic. It's got image transport to handle compression and that sort of thing. The difference is that the image data itself is going to be stored as 32-bit floats to represent the distance, or sometimes as 16-bit unsigned integers. If it's floats, then each pixel is going to be representing a depth in meters, and if it's ints, then it's going to be in millimeters. You can check out the ROS standard rep 118 for more information on this. And just like regular images, you can view depth images, and you can see the depth. Now it's worth noting that if you are ever viewing depth images, you want to make sure that the image is normalized. This is where we scale the brightness so that the whitest thing is the thing that's furthest away that we can actually see, and the thing that's darkest is the thing that's closest. And that ensures that the range of shades that we can see corresponds to what's actually in the picture and we can actually see everything. ROS also provides the depth image proc package, which is a whole bunch of tools for working with depth images. This includes nodes to do things like converting from the 16-bit integer depth images to the float ones, for converting depth images into a point cloud, or for registering a depth image. That's where we take a depth image and an RGB image and align them together. Alright, so now we're going to see how to simulate a depth camera in Gazebo. And again, this is going to rely very heavily on the previous tutorial, so make sure you've done that one first. So we'll start off by taking our camera.exacro file that we made in the last tutorial. We're just going to copy and paste that, and we're going to rename it to depth camera. So we're going to start with that one, 
And then in our robot.urdf.exacro, I'm gonna copy the camera include line. And then just so that we don't have them both at the same time, I'm gonna comment out the first one and call this one depth camera. And then you can just swap between them as you need to. So let's have a look at this depth camera file here. So we're gonna keep most of this all exactly the same as we had for our regular camera. And then down here in the sensor section, we're gonna change the type from camera to depth. And that's just about it. So because we've added a new file, we wanna build it with Colcon. Should only take a minute. And now we'll source our workspace. And then just like last time, we'll launch our gazebo simulation. And so the first thing you'll notice is that we haven't got the nice little preview here of the camera. I don't know if it's a bug or a deliberate thing, but we don't get that when we've got depth cameras. But what we can now do is open up RViz. As usual, we'll set our fixed frame to Odom, we'll add a robot model. And now we'll add an image display. And then when we open up the drop down for the image topic, we'll see that as well as our camera image raw topics that we had last time, we've now got the depth camera. So we've got the depth namespace inside the camera namespace. And then within that, we've got the same things that we have for our regular one. So we've got the image raw and we've got the camera info and then all the compressed stuff. So we'll go to the image raw, but we notice all we get is a black rectangle. It doesn't seem right. We can change normalize and something happens, but it still doesn't seem right. You might think it's not working, but if we add a point cloud, we can select the camera slash points topic. And we'll see here that we actually get a full 3D colored point cloud, whoop, colored point cloud of our data. And that's really cool, I reckon. So you can see around and see what's going on around the robot. So we've got two problems here to deal with. One, this is blue instead of orange, it should be orange. And then the other thing is that we've got this black rectangle. So you'll notice here that the point cloud two by default, it's detected that there's color data and it's using the RGB eight color transformer. But because of Endianness and that sort of thing, it's actually got to be BGR. So the first thing we'll do here where we've got RGB, we're gonna swap the red and the blue channels and make that B8R8G8. It really should be able to detect that and figure out it itself. Whoop, B8G8R8. It should be able to figure that out and detect it itself, uh, but it doesn't. Now the other thing, and to be honest, I don't 100% understand why we need this one, is we've gotta set two extra parameters here down in the plugin. So we've got min depth and max depth. I don't exactly understand what these parameters are doing because it's actually our clipping planes, as far as I can tell, that determine how far the depth camera sees, but we've got to set these to something. So let's set them to 0.1 as the minimum and 100 as the maximum. So we'll save that. We'll close gazebo. We'll leave RViz open so we can kill gazebo, rerun that. So that'll now respawn. If we go back into RViz and hit reset, we'll now see that we've got something in our depth image. We can see how far away this is and also our colors are correct. From there, we can open up a uh, twist keyboard so that we can drive it around. And you'll see that as we drive it, things that are further away are gonna be lighter colored. And sure enough, they're shown further away in our little colored point cloud. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that there seems to be this kind of uh, desynchronization between the RGB image and the point cloud. As far as I can tell, that's something that's happening either within the gazebo sensor or within the plugin. I don't know how they're getting out of sync. Um, if someone does know what's going on there and how to fix it, let me know. Um, so that's a bit, a bit strange, but other than that, it works pretty well. We can see our environment in 3D. So that's pretty cool. Now that we know how to set up a simulated depth camera in Gazebo, let's have a go at connecting to a real depth camera using ROS. 
Now I had planned on setting this up using the Raspberry Pi for this demo, but I started to run into issues with under voltage, um, which just goes to show that you do have to be careful with your, your power supplies and that sort of thing when you're using this kind of hardware. I'm hoping to get that fixed up for a later video, but for now, we're just gonna do this demo using the dev machine. For this demo, I'm gonna be using the Oak D Lite, which is a small, low-cost stereo depth camera sold by Luxonis as part of their Depth AI platform. This camera is also kind of connected to OpenCV, so Oak actually stands for the OpenCV AI kit, and then the D tells us that it's a depth camera. Let's take a look at the features this camera's got. In the center, it's got a high definition RGB camera, and then on the sides, there are two standard definition grayscale cameras, and these are what's used for the stereo depth estimation. On board, it's got the Intel Movidius vision processing unit. Now, I haven't had much to do with this, but as I understand it, you can use this little onboard processor to perform some basic vision processing applications, things like facial recognition, some machine learning, and that way you're gonna save computation on the device that it's connected to, like the Raspberry Pi. I'm hoping to explore that in maybe a future video. Now, I picked up this camera as part of their Kickstarter campaign last year, but I've only just had a go at using it this week. And to be honest, I'm not that impressed with it so far, especially with the depth estimation. So I don't know quite yet whether I'd recommend it, but I am hoping that with the sensors that it's got and the onboard processing, that maybe with some time and some updates, that it'll become a really useful low cost sensor for all kinds of people to use. So with that being said, let's have a go at connecting to it and getting some data. So I've got my Oak D Lite connected to the computer. I'm actually using the little wire splitter adapter that you can buy with it. So that uh, takes the USB-C connection and splits it into two, one for data and one for power. That way you can use the data one for USB 3 for your high speed connection. And then the power can go somewhere else that's maybe got a bit more uh, current to supply to it. So this is especially useful for something like the Raspberry Pi where you don't want the full power going straight through the Pi's board itself. And we can check that it's connected by running LS USB in a terminal. And we see here we've got Intel Movidius Myriad X. So that's it, that's connected. Now we'll start by going to this uh, Git repo here. So that's github.com slash Luxonis slash depthai ross. And the first thing it has us doing is just executing this kind of random line. Now I'm gonna open this script up in a new tab. And we can see that the first thing it's doing is calling another script that confusingly has the same name. And that script's gonna install a bunch of system dependencies. So you should go check that one out as well, but I'm going to run that. Okay, so that took way longer than it needed to, thanks to my flaky internet out here in the shed. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and execute the rest of these commands now, one by one. What they're gonna do is download the source code for the actual main uh, depth AI library um, and driver. And that's gonna install that onto the computer. It's gonna build it from source, install it onto the computer, and then the ROS driver is going to utilize that, that library. All right, so once you've run that command and that command, that'll have built it and tried to install it. That'll take a long time. And then I forgot to uh, start my screen recorder again after I did that. So what you'll find then is that the installation will fail if you've just been copying and pasting the commands like I have. So you just want to rerun that same command again with sudo in front and that'll successfully uh, install it to the right system locations. So we'll just scroll down. Uh, and then the rest of the commands just tell you to uh, delete the folder that you're working on. Um, so, which I did that and you can do that if you want. So the next step that it asks for is to install rostep, which I probably should have done uh, already, but I haven't. So we'll sudo apt install Python 3 rostep. And then we set up rostep by taking, typing sudo rostep in it and then rostep update. Okay, so now we're gonna do these steps here. So it first tells us to, uh, well, I'm gonna get into my home directory first and I'm gonna make a new workspace called DAIWS, so that stands for Depth AI Workspace. And then I'm gonna create a folder called source in there and get into that. Now it tells us to use uh, the VCS tool here to import the repos. I'm just gonna do it the long way because I prefer that way. So we're gonna clone this depth AI ROS repo. And then 
if you go and have a look in this file, you can see the other repo that it's going to get is depth AI ROS examples. So once that first one's cloned, we want to also clone the examples. Okay, now what it wants us to do is to use ROSDEP to install the dependencies for these. So what that's going to do is it's going to look at uh, the package metadata for these repos and find all of the other dependencies that these might need. So I'm just going to actually get back into uh, the top level of the workspace here and run that command. All right, so we can see there it installed a couple of dependencies and now we can build it with Colcon. So Colcon build. Now, if you're trying to build this on the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to uh, include uh, some extra things you should add to your command because I found that otherwise the Pi will run out of RAM as it's trying to build, but this computer should be fine. So we'll just Colcon build. And once again, we'll wait a little while for this to finish. Okay, so that's now built. We can source our workspace. Now, what we can do is we can run ROS2 launch uh, depth AI. Now, the package is actually called depth AI examples, not depth AI uh, ROS examples, which was the name of the repo. And then we want to run the RGB publisher launch file. So that's now connecting to the camera. It's creating a whole bunch of transform frames for us. So if we open up RViz in a new terminal, and we want to set our frame. You see it's got a whole bunch of transform frames for us. Just pick one of them, it doesn't really matter. We'll add the image display. And now when we look at the topics here, we can see because we did the RGB publisher, all it's doing is just publishing the RGB data. So there it is. The camera can see me, that's good. Let's have a go at getting some stereo depth data. So we're going to kill that one. And now we're going to run stereo.launch.py. And I forgot to add before, you should also add this extra parameter that is camera model. And we want to set that to be equal to oak D light. Now this one's actually going to launch RViz with it. That's why I closed my RViz instance from before. So it's all set up. We can see, there we go, we've got one of the mono images on the left there, and we've also got the point cloud. So it's a little bit tricky to make out, but hopefully you can see, um, yeah, some of the things that are behind me. So you can see here is these containers behind me. Now, if I add another image display here, so you can see this image, image rect here, the topic is slash right, whoop, it was slash right slash image rect. And on my new image display, I'm going to set the topic to be left image rect. And so you can see this is the uh, rectified. So that means um, undistorted images from the two cameras. So if I cover the left hand camera, you can see it's covered up. And then if I cover the right hand camera instead, so you can see they're seeing the two different things. And then they're also being combined to produce a, a stereo depth image. Now, this one doesn't look like much. Actually, we're going to go uh, stereo converted depth, that's just a 32-bit one. Um, now it doesn't look like much, I'm going to untick normalize. So you can see there, we can see a bit more, um, but at the moment this, this normalization range is only going from 0 to 1 meter. So let's set this to maybe 5 meters. So you can start to see that I'm one color, the things behind me are a different color. If I go close to the camera it's going to be very dark and get lighter and lighter the further away I get and then white will be five meters and, and anything further than five meters. Now, this point cloud doesn't look very nice. Uh, it's just a bunch of dots. It would be nicer if we could actually see the image data in the point cloud. Now, I've been trying and have not been able to get it to properly register an RGB image and then pass that data into the point cloud. Um, I might include some notes in the description or in the blog post on how I have gone about doing it. Um, but like I said, I haven't been successful, so if anyone does manage to do that, let me know. What we're going to do instead is we're just, I'm just going to kill this with Control C. Uh, I'm going to use the grayscale data from one of the uh, mono cameras to use that as, as image data for the points. So the way I'm going to do that, we'll open up VS Code. We'll open up our new workspace that we've created. And then if we go source, examples, launch, whoop, we can see here that stereo.launch.py. We'll close that. Now, 
this little section here is telling us, uh, it's a section that is taking in the depth image as an image rect and it's putting out the points. So I'm gonna use um, the example from the ROS repos on this. So I'm just gonna quickly go and find that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, composable node section here and I'm going to put that in here next to this one. So you can see it's going to replace this little section. Now our remappings, we need RGB info and color. Now that's actually going to be, I'm going to use the right camera here. So instead of the actual RGB, so we'll take the camera info and the image rect. Now this depth registered image rect, that's just asking for the uh, the stereo converted depth in this case. Again, it should be one that's been registered to an RGB image, but we haven't got that. And then finally the points, we want to map to stereo points. So I'm going to now delete that original one. We're going to uh, build it again with Colcon. You should build in a separate terminal, but eh, it's fine. And now I'm going to launch that stereo launch pi again. And to start off with, it's probably going to look exactly the same. Yep. But now what we can do is here in the color transformer, I can swap this from intensity to RGB eight. And so it's now using that right image as the, uh, the color transformer. So you can see there, you can see me as I move around. Like I said, I'm not that impressed with the depth behavior. Um, it does work. So we can look around, we can see that I'm there and then the containers are behind me and then the wall is kind of behind it. Um, yep, so it's pretty cool. Uh, not as good as I would like, but I'm hoping that with future software updates and maybe um, using some deep learning approaches and that sort of thing, I don't know, neural inference, um, that with that, that Movidius chip and everything that perhaps they'll get some better results. Maybe, maybe not. But at the very least, um, there are probably some algorithms that could benefit from this from being able to, um, yeah, distinguish objects more easily by seeing if they're further away. And like I said, if I do manage to get the color depth registration working, I'll include some notes on that in the corresponding blog post. So now you've got all the skills you need to handle depth cameras as well as regular cameras. And like I said, there are heaps of algorithms out there, especially for object detection and SLAM that can make use of that extra depth information. For the rest of these tutorials though, we're gonna focus on the RGB camera. So it doesn't matter what kind of camera you've got. Now, as far as the tutorials go, we've now got all of our sensors set up and connected. So that means that we can move on to assembling. So in the next video, I'm gonna be putting the robot all together. And then after that, we'll be able to start looking at ROS2 control, SLAM, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you found this helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing. If you've got any questions or comments, let us know below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.